Well, we purchased this farm here. It was 280 acres in 1958. And uh, I was on the number one list in Coddington County for their draft. So I was being pushed pretty hard as to when uh, uncle was going to come and take me to the military. But I had some Hereford cows and I needed a place to put them and we started looking before I got uh, drafted or was about ready to get drafted. And uh, a good friend of mine north of Watertown that had a hired man and he was from up in this area and he said there's a farm for sale up there. So dad and I come up and we looked this over and that's how we ended up in Grant County here. So we had weeds on that 80 acres where we got the, the CRP now that was as high as your tractor. So I got that started to plow and that under so we could do something with it. And I had to leave and dad finished it. Two years later, I come home and uh, bought some more Hereford cows and put them out here and then we started the improvement. Initially we started grazing that as a, a one pasture. Finally got it all so we got one homogeneous area and that way we could get our grazing going and, and we put some corrals up there on the south side so a guy could put the cattle in there. This 10 acres right to the south of us here in 1964, I think I seeded that to native grass. The first time anybody up here had tried any of that. And I uh, brought a drill clear from McIntosh, South Dakota. Seeded that, got it on, big blue stem Indian grass, switchgrass, side oats, grandmas. Little blue stem. Well, I had some western wheat grass in there and I also had some green needle. Especially on these gravel slopes where we lost so much soil, it really showed up. And then that's kind of where I start planning that quarter over there is what we would try to transition to. And it took some time and then finally Chuck come along as a tenant and uh, he had some of the similar goals I've had and we decided that hey when time and dollars would afford it you could start transitioning that pasture over there. Me and Dwayne had a lot of the same same theories and same ideas and practices that we wanted to develop. And it was just a matter of putting them into a working motion. And it took a lot of talk, a lot of ideas, and we ended up putting in these paddocks that we really believe are truly a good thing for the pasture. My father-in-law farmed Duane's land for many years and when he got injured I took over the cattle and I had my own cattle at the time but I farmed the land. Chuck's father-in-law, Jordan's grandpa, Melvin, my dad and him farmed together for over 50 years I believe, which is a long time. I think that's pretty important. And then it went to Chuck and now Chuck's been in the picture for 20 years or more. And so it's been a lifelong deal between our family and their family. And I think that's pretty neat. There's a few other outsiders, you know, that rent different things and we're close to them too, but nothing like the Briar and Wolshog or Ty. These guys are not just, you know, landowners, tenants. This is a family. You know, there might not be shared blood, but that's what this is. You know, I, I grew up thinking of Dwayne as a grandpa. That's just where we were. The relationship these guys have is amazing. A lot of times when I work with landowner or a tenant, they're depending on their backgrounds, it's, you can fight tooth and nail trying to get something across. 
But with Dwayne's background being a conservationist and what Chuck wants done and then what they're looking for the future, it's so much easier to sell the program or sell something. The relationship that these producers have had working together between the Briars and the Wolschlagers is, is what makes the prairie um, come to life. All of the things that they've been able to do with their relationship working with uh, NRCS throughout the years. I have four children. Um, one of them actually is named Briar um, after a strong relationship we've had with uh, Dwayne and Mary growing up. A lot of my memories are from being up in this neck of the woods and uh, life lessons I was able to learn um, founding posts with these guys. So very strong connection and some of the things I want to do is just get my kids out on the farm so they're able to see and learn the same things that I was growing up. We've had some rough times, weather, markets, you name it, but uh, Chuck has used the positive side through most of this and, uh, and been an equal partner, you might say, in, in keeping this thing afloat. It's possible to rejuvenate these resources if we go at it in the right way. And I, I really appreciate these outside help and the, being efficient in wildlife. You'd never think, you know, when I first started, you'd never think they'd be involved in something like this. Now the game and fish is, you got pheasants forever, you got ducks unlimited, you got a lot of people that realize Landowner is still the key. And if we can get him interested, like Chuck and his family is, all of a sudden, you got a nucleus from which to start to get some of this going and keep it going. If we kind of take the best land and farm that and put the rest into things that will make us a living, provide the wildlife that we should have and proceed in a probably lower key form. Slow down a little. Enjoy life. Most of us aren't here that long. Hopefully we'll see more here than there ever was when I first started.